Hey everyone, it's Chad, and today we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. Normally, for removing mill scale, I use a product called muriatic acid, and I put a video out quite a while back on how to remove mill scale the quickest way. And one of the commenters said that white vinegar works just as well. So I'm going to put it to the test. I would be happy to use white vinegar over muriatic acid. Muriatic acid is kind of nasty. Uh, it is. You can neutralize it with just water. It's not, you know, that big a deal. That said, when you're using it, it off gases. There's a lot of VOCs. It can actually, I'm using it out here in the backyard away from everything in my shop simply because muriatic acid off gassing will rust everything in your workshop. So I made a novice mistake. I left my shop on Friday to head to California for the weekend and I forgot something. I had been working with muriatic acid before I left, so it was kind of all over my table here. For those of you who don't know, if you leave muriatic acid out in a metal shop, it tends to taint everything that those fumes can touch. The side of my wings that I polished have started to tarnish. The side of the wings that I didn't polish but didn't finish either have completely tarnished. Look at the difference. Metal projects that were sitting off to the side waiting. Part of the weave that I had not polished and sealed is all tarnished. Learn from my novice mistake. Make sure you clean up muriatic acid if you're in a metal shop. It'll trash everything. So if you're going to do like me and use muriatic acid for removing mill scale, and I've got two six inch plates that I use these for a tool I make and I, I need to remove the mill scale and clean them up so that I can uh, weld to them. This works really quick, but at the same time, you have to be careful when you use it. While I'm using it, I will have on a respirator. I wear nitrile gloves, and even while wearing nitrile gloves, I'm careful. I don't get it all over my hands. And absolute necessity, because you only get one set, eye protection. So let's get started. All right, I have all my safety gear on. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm not gonna be talking much because obviously this definitely will block what I'm saying. Uh, just two equal pieces. I didn't put these out. One in each bucket. And See how long it takes. I'm going to go get a bucket of water so that when I pull these out, I can rinse them off. I drill holes in the bottom. Hope that's showing up on the video. Now that I've got the uh, acid neutralized, I'm going to go ahead and take off my safety equipment so I can talk. It's completely neutralized. The acid's gone. All of the mill scale is gone. Just to give you a little before and after, before, after. So this is pure, clean, completely neutralized. And as long as I leave this in the bucket with the water, I don't have to process it. Uh, if I leave this out of the, if I leave this out of the water for any amount of time, I'm going to start to see a flash rust on it. And I'm going to show you a little bit later exactly what I do to prevent that flash rust from occurring. Now, again, white vinegar much safer to use, but I. 
I'm very confident that it's much slower. I'm not even sure how long it's going to take, but I can show you this is where we're at. It's still still working at it. I'm sure that it's removed some, but it's just it's not visually detectable at this point. And I'm going to leave this in for however long it takes, and then I'll finish the video up. Do a little bit of post-processing on the metal. Keep it from continuing to rust. Get the water off of it. It's, it's a rust inhibitor. It'll actually get rid of rust if you, if you get some rust on here uh, before you have a chance to do anything with it. You can usually spray it down with this, and any, any simple surface rust will be eliminated. Um, and you can spray that on and just let it dry on there. And that's not going to rust. I have a feeling this is going to be an editing nightmare because I want to I want to show the integrity of the test by not clipping it, but obviously we're uh, I don't know, 20 minutes in probably, and I'm going to have to speed this up like a million times so that people don't lose interest, but there you go. Uh, equal time, it's not an equal, equal uh, process, but Again, maybe leaving this in overnight, I'm not sure. I'm gonna come back in a few hours and uh, check it again, and we'll see exactly where we get to. That's it for the test for right now. Uh, please leave me some uh, questions down in the comments. If you have any other ideas for how to remove mill scale besides what I'm doing, uh, I'd love to test them and see if there's anything that I can do to improve my process, whether that's improving the safety of it or the speed or any any component of it if i can improve it i would love to do that obviously if time isn't an issue then safety would definitely be a critical factor and a reason that i'd want to use the white vinegar if you got kids involved or anything like that you can use white vinegar and it's going to be very safe for them to be around i mean it's a cleaning product it's used in food so you can't really go wrong with it but if time is an issue, sometimes you have to go with something that's a little bit more caustic. Again, it's neutralized very rapidly with just some basic baking soda. And, you know, I, I, let me go grab my other bucket that I've had for two and a half, three years, and I'll show you up close exactly what it looks like. And it's not nearly as volatile. As a matter of fact, there's two different types of muriatic acid at your local uh, stores. One has basically the full strength. And then the second one, I think is cut about half with water. And it's a, they call it a low odor version. And again, it's not gonna be as acidic, but I would say that you're probably not gonna lose that much time. And maybe I'll do another test where I compare the two, but I really think that they're gonna be pretty close time-wise. I, I would say that it's not gonna be double the time, but even if it was 10 minutes to 20 minutes, I don't think is going to really affect anybody. The other option is just to get the full strength and cut it yourself with water from the very beginning. But let me go, let me go grab uh, my other tub and I'll show a close up of what it looks like after two years. You can see this bucket has uh, spilled over quite a bit. And the reason for that, if these screw on caps were a little better, they would actually overlap this. Unfortunately, they don't, and so what happens, water, when it rains, gets into this, and I don't have it covered because I don't have a covered area where I don't have stuff that's metal. So it sits out in the open uh, in a shaded area near a tree, and, I mean, that's proof right there that it's not harmful. I've had it next to a tree for the entire two years, and it's never damaged anything, but you can see the off-gassing is not nearly as prevalent and at this point this has been used hundreds and hundreds of times and it's probably been cut I mean I'm just taking a wild guess but I'd say probably I bet it's five to one water to muriatic acid so that shows you if you really want to cut it back and still get you know for me I'm probably I'm probably putting this in for about 45 minutes now. So it's maybe five times longer than straight muriatic acid, but it's still very usable. And actually all I have to do 
to make this more potent is just add some more muriatic acid to it. I don't even have to get rid of it. People were really concerned in my previous video about how you dispose of this. If you had to dispose of it, basically what you do is fill a bucket with some water, uh, not completely full, but partially full, and uh, put baking soda in it. And I'm gonna need to check, I can't remember. 80 degrees, partly cloudy, to the high of 90. So 10 a.m. I'll probably come back around 1.30, maybe, maybe one. All right, it's 3.11, so it's about. Uh... While I was out, I had a thought, and the thought was that the original commenter had said white vinegar, and I got cleaning vinegar, and I started thinking, you know, I'm assuming that the brand I got and all that is, is exactly what they say it is, and that is stronger than regular white vinegar, but in the interest of science and making sure I'm doing what that person had said, I'm going to go ahead and start a second bucket, a third bucket I guess, with the white vinegar in it. And we'll put another plate in here and see if that gives us any different result. And once I get this started, we'll check the other bucket. I didn't want to oh, stick this up here. We got distilled white vinegar and another plate. And this one's hot. Heat does actually help the process. So, oh, man, that is hot. Ooh, it's burning my hand. Kind of hot. That is crazy hot. All right, so... seal that up. Let's take a look at what about six hours has done to this plate. Alright, I can actually, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look at the, you see the, it's actually working. Um, you can see the, the blackness in this. That's the mill scale coming off, which is essentially like an iron mixture. And how about that? We have now at least one. I wish I maybe had checked this before I did the uh, other vinegar. But, well, let's, I'm going to keep letting it go. Yeah, this, uh, all of it. Rust, mill scale, everything is off. And the commenter was 100% accurate. This, this is a win. I'm very, very happy with uh, the outcome. And for anybody who doesn't feel comfortable using muriatic acid, uh, this is a great alternative. I have to say, I'm absolutely pleased with the outcome. Now, I will say this, if you need speed, Muriatic acid is going to be faster. Also on the muriatic acid, to neutralize it, uh, I use baking soda and uh, water. And the proper way to do that, to neutralize your muriatic acid if you need to for whatever reason, take the muriatic acid and you're going to pour it into water. And then you can add baking soda to that water slash muriatic acid mixture. And it'll foam up while you're doing it, but slowly but surely, as you add the baking soda, it'll eventually stop. Man, that's just, just beautiful, man. I'm really happy with that. But as I was saying, the uh, muriatic acid uh, and baking soda, as you're adding the baking soda into that diluted muriatic acid, it's going to foam up. And then once it finishes foaming, it's completely neutralized. If you look inside, you see the black? That's the actual mill scale that's been left behind. And if you look at the, uh, I'm not gonna do it, but that's the color that the muriatic acid is after it's been removing stuff. All right, so there you go. Uh, I guess we have a win. We got two different ways. We have 
muriatic acid, which is basically hydrochloric acid, and we have acetic acid, or white vinegar, white distilled vinegar, and both of them seem to be working uh, just fine. And there's no question that using white vinegar is preferable from a safety standpoint. So I might have to reevaluate. I might switch over from muriatic acid. Sometimes I need it done faster. Uh, the other morning I had to get about three of these prepped up and I had, I don't know, an hour and a half in the morning to do it and that would not have been uh, ideal for the vinegar. But any other time, you know, if I have overnight to wait or whatever, because I think you could leave this in, it's not etching the metal at all. You could leave that in overnight, no problem. So there you go. Essentially, before and after. I have to say, I'm super, super impressed. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. I'm going to continue testing this one. I'll probably post the results of this on my Instagram. So if you're interested in seeing how just the inexpensive, this is about, I want to say half the cost of using this. So if you want a cheaper version, I, I'm going to say that it's probably going to work just fine. Get just the plain white vinegar. I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know on my Instagram stories or my Instagram uh, feed how this turned out. Thanks for watching, guys. Hey, also, I never, ever, ever get to mention this stuff because I never think of it. I have affiliate links down in my description to anything that I use in the video, including my setup for recording. In addition to that, I also have a Patreon. I haven't uh, peddled it much, but if you want to see more content from me, Patreon's a great way to push my productivity level up. And what I mean by that is I have to work a lot of extra hours to be able to pay for projects like this. And when I'm working those extra jobs, it's keeping me from being able to put out content. If you want to see me put out more content, support me on Patreon. It'll give me a heads up, a leg up at that process. So thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'm going to go weld these up. Thank you. Cut it out. I guess there's cicadas in the backyard.